going to be the first video out of a few for this little, I guess, mini-series where we cover just basic cheat prevention. Now, there's a couple of things that I want to cover, but I figured I'd start off in the simplest form that I can really think of. Now, that's going to obviously be something like health. So, in multiplayer games, you let's say a first-person shooter like Call of Duty. Well, when you get shot, you lose health. Well, let's say you found your health value in Cheat Engine, and you decided to go ahead and lock it. Well, when you get shot, guess what? You're still going to die, and that's because of the way everything is set up. So it's set up to where it's pretty much, I don't want to say impossible, but it's not feasible to really be able to go through and cheat your health. So that's why when it comes down to those types of games, the only cheats you really have are things like ESP, aimbot, and that sort of thing. So what I have here is the simplest, just a very simple, incorrectly done way of having health and losing it through multiplayer. So currently, whenever I press the E key, it calls the function lose health. All I do in lose health is I subtract 10 from our current health. I call a server RPC to tell the server that I'm losing health, and I pass in my health value. Now, if you have any brain at all, you will probably have realized the problem with this. But I'll leave that here for a couple minutes. Then we go through and we print out the client's health. And then by the time it has reached the server, we also print out the server's health value. So that way we can see them, um, just see both the values. So let's go ahead and give that a quick test run here. Let me go ahead and run the server. And I will launch the client. So this is running in a dedicated environment, if that wasn't clear. So here's my health, health 100. I press E, goes down to 90. And I just realized I forgot to connect to the server. There we go, my health is 100, press E, goes down to 90, and on the server it shows 90. Press it twice, go to 70, and as you can see, the server's value is also following along with our health value. Now let's say I load up Cheat Engine. Go ahead and attach it to the process. Search for, I know it's type float, we're gonna search for 70, which is our current health. Check for a minute one more time, go to 60. Here we have two values. Let's try the first one. Set it to 100. All right, nothing happened, so it's most likely going to be the second one. Set that to 100. And our health is now 100. Now, if we look at the server, it's still showing 60 for the health. So I press E again, and instead of going from 60 to 50, it goes down to 90. And same thing on the server, it also goes back to 90. Now, what are the reasons for that? Well, obviously, aside from this being a very, very poorly written setup, we are telling the server what we want our value to be. Now, for things like health, stamina, and all that, obviously, you don't want to do that. So even though our health value is replicated, it doesn't matter because we're still setting the health value through the client. So you never want the client to have authority over key values or key functions or key really just anything important in your game that is, unless you absolutely have to, that is exploitable. You always want to keep that stuff on the server and have the sort the server be what is authoritative. So when you have like your has authority checks, there's there for a reason. So you can check and see who has authority over an object. You have server checks. That's there for a reason. Same thing, like you can go through and do if defines, and I could, for example, I could compile out this function here for the client build so that way people can't reverse engineer it and see what it does because that code does not exist on their client unless they get a hold of the dedicated server, which ultimately they most likely won't have access to in the first place. So how do we go about actually writing this the correct way? Well, we have a replicated vari variable here called health. We have our server RPC to tell the server that we want to lose health. Well, normally, we wouldn't actually trigger this on the client, but for this case, we are going to. So think of this kind of like stamina, I guess. So what we're going to do is we want to have a couple different things. So first off, we want to have it be when our health decrements, we want it to be instant. So like the snap of your fingers. So just like before, when I was pressing E, my health went from 100 to 90 immediately. So we want to continue to have that. We don't want any delay there. And just like when you're shooting, like in CSGO, for example, when you get a headshot, there's practically no delay. You want that to hold true for this kind of stuff too. So that way the game feels nice and responsive, not slow and sluggish. Next up, we don't want the server 
to really, well, let me rephrase that. We want the client to not tell the server what the health value should be. We want the server to tell the client what the health value should be. So what we're going to do is instead of passing health as a parameter, we're just going to remove that from our server IPC. Like so. And then we're just going to subtract 10 from the server as well. So ultimately what we're doing is we're subtracting 10 on the client, call to the server, subtract 10 on the server, and because it's replicated, the client will ultimately end up with the correct health value. Now, there is some problems with this as well. So those problems more so lie with uh, shooters, but I'll get into that here in a minute. So let's go ahead and give that a try again. Yeah. Okay, let's go ahead and connect. All right, and as usual, cheat engine. Search for 100. Search for 90. We can still see here everything's working all the same. Let's try to set this one to 100. As you can see, the value is now 100 on our client here. When I press E though, it goes down to 80 instead of 90. And on the server, it goes from 90 to 80. So if we go all the way down to 50, and we set it to 100, press E, it goes down to 40. So you can see there it kind of, I don't know how you could see it, but let me, uh, can I lock this and just see what it looks like? So I press E, well, it's showing 100, but showing it's 30 on the server. I unlock it, you might be able to see it. If you watch the 100 very carefully, you should see it go to 90 and then 20. Like it, it changes twice. So that's that little bit of delay that I was referring to. So ultimately, we're preventing cheating this way. So no matter what we do, if we have 10 health and we set it back to 100, well, we get shot again. Guess what? We're at zero health and we die regardless because the server has authority over our health. Now, what I was referring to earlier when I mentioned the problems with kind of first-person shooters, you may not necessarily want to have, like if you have your health being displayed, you probably don't want to have your health change on the client like we do here. Instead, what you probably want to do is have it be only changed on the server. So just like in CSGO, you can see your health. Well... Or let me rephrase that. If you can see like an enemy's health, for example. Well, if you shoot that player, let's say it's they're at 100 health. You shoot them in the center of the chest and on your client, you deal, I don't know, 80 damage. So they now have health of 20. Well, let's say on the server, something went a little bit wrong. Or depend, obviously this depends on how you have your setup for, uh, just set up for everything. But ultimately... If the server thinks you hit them in the shoulder, for example, which with ping, that is a very likely option, especially if you're not using the client hit data, which I personally kind of recommend just using the client hit data with some validation checks in there, then you are going to have a kind of a frustrating time because even though you hit them in the center of the chest, the server thinks you hit them in the shoulder. So the health is going to go from 20 because you hit them for 80. You're going to see their health go down to 20. And then by the time the server updates the value for everybody on of that client, let's say the server only did 50 damage. Well, the player's health just went from 20 on your client, so you saw it with a health of 20, to 50. So you can kind of see how that would be a little bit frustrating. Anyways, um, the way you would normally want to set that up is you would just kind of deal with the little bit of delay. So obviously there's going to be next to no delay here because I am the host. But let's go ahead and just have the server have complete control so I am no longer decrementing my health on the client. I'm only doing it on the server. So I can set this back to 100. It'll be this one. And everything still works all the same. So you can't really cheat there, and I'm barely feeling any difference in the delay, and that's obviously because I'm hosting on my own machine. 
Now, if you shoot someone in an FPS game, you might be considering that delay being an issue. Honestly, unless the ping is hard and you're lagging all over the place, you will probably not notice it unless you're staring directly at their health and doing testing to actually try to see if you can physically notice the delay between when you shoot, when the projectile or line trace, whatever impacts, and when the health updates. Because obviously you're going to be paying attention to other things. And unless you are lagging really bad, you're probably not going to notice that delay. And if you're bad enough to where you do notice that delay, you have bigger problems because you're probably going to have a very hard time really doing anything because your ping or the other person's ping or just everyone's connection is horrid to the server. So hopefully that kind of gives you a rough idea of ways you, that you can prevent cheating. So this is obviously a very basic example because this is just a simple stat, like, again, health. So it doesn't get much simpler than this, but remember, if it's important, make sure the server has authority over it. So if it's just for effects or something like that where you want an instant response, that is okay to run on the client, but the actual data that handles everything behind the scenes make that run on the server. So like an example that I have, or that I actually do in pretty much most of my shooting videos, like Nazi Zombie series or the Team Deathmatch Patreon series, we perform the shot on the client. So like when we shoot our rifle, we shoot on the client. The client plays the smoke effect, the sound, you can see the case eject, and you can see the projectile impact and all that kind of stuff. But all of that's just visual. Same thing, you can even see the bullet on the client. But the server is what actually deals the damage to whatever was shot. So the server has authority over the actual data that drives the gameplay. The client just plays the effects. So you can think of the server as the game, and we're just sitting here controlling the game and watching it happen. That's kind of a, at least that's kind of a way I kind of try to view it. So anyways, I'm kind of rambling at this point, so I'm going to let you all go if Assuming anyone even makes it to the end of these things, considering I have less than 100 views in most of my videos, I kind of doubt it. <laughs> Anyways, as always, if you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, feel free to check out my Patreon down in the description below. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord server as well and ask away, and I'll try to help you out. So, take care.